Hello and welcome to Dialogue. I'm Xu Qinzhuo. Today we are very much honored to have Professor Roger T. Ames, Vice President of the International Confucian Association and a Humanities Chair Professor at the Peking University on our show. One of the world's leading sinologists, Professor Ames came to China for the first time as an exchange student. He developed a great interest in the core values of Chinese culture and has devoted himself to promotion of Chinese culture and philosophy for many decades. In 2021, Professor Ames received the Chinese Government Friendship Award, the highest award for non-Chinese experts who have made great contributions to the Chinese society. Today, Professor Ames will share with us his understanding of Chinese philosophy and what alternative solutions it offers to the world's problems in an era of a crisis. Welcome to the show, Professor. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Well, Professor Ames, I know that you attended the Diversified Culture Share the Future session at the 2022 Boa Forum for Asia. Did you see strong consensus, you know, agreement among the participants for the notion of shared Asian values despite cultural diversity? Uh, very much so. I, um, I, I think the word consensus is really a good word. It's a better word than uh, Asian values. Um, the Asian values tends to be conceptual, you know, as though people have the same thing. And I don't think that that's what we find among the Asian cultures, but consensus means shared feelings. And so I think that there's a very good shared feeling among the participants uh, in the, the conference. I know that everybody that I talked to was very happy to be there and had great expectations from, from this initiative. Uh, well, of course, today we are talking about the Chinese philosophy, Chinese culture, Chinese values. I wonder, you know, where uh, do Chinese values uh, fit in in this community of Asian culture or Asian values or the consensus, as you said? Yeah, I, I think um, China is given its uh, tradition, given its history, uh, given its size, that China has to be a leader in Asia. And um, one of the things that we know about China is that it has 300 million more people than Africa. China is twice the size of a combined Eastern and Western Europe. And so a culture this old that has persisted so long has got certain values that keep all of these different, these diverse peoples together. And so I think China in this way can be an inspiration for um, the idea of unity. Like uh, Tang Juni is a very famous uh, philosopher. And when he talks about Chinese culture, he talks about yi do bu fen, the inseparability of one and many. And so I think that we can find in the Chinese tradition the one that can bring the many together, an inspiration for it. I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, you know, the indivisible one uh, and many. Uh, can you talk more about that in particular in contrast with uh, uh, probably the Western culture, like uh, this one behind the many? Right, right. Um, I, I think what, what Confucian culture has to offer not only Asia, but it has something to offer the world. And that is that it has an alternative to the ideology of individualism. Individualism is a fiction. We don't, as individuals, live our lives inside our skin. We don't, as cultures, live our lives within a culture. A culture is always spreading out in its relationship with other cultures. The most, the most fertile area is the area between cultures. And so um, I think that um, the, this ideology of individualism, this winners and losers, this zero sum mentality that we have uh, is something that we're gonna have to set aside and we're going to have to move in the direction of 
recognizing that if the human being is going to flourish in the world, we have to collaborate, we have to cooperate, we have to work together to solve the world's problems. Uh, the I Ching, the, the COVID virus, the, um, the global warming, the environmental degradation, food and water shortage, global hunger, all of these kinds of problems are only problems that, that we can solve together. Uh, China can't solve them, America can't solve them, Europe can't solve them, but if we work together, we can work together. And so China offers the world an alternative to this idea of the individual. In, in, in Confucian culture, people are constituted by their relationships. Ji yu li are li ren, that, that if, you, if your neighbor does better, you do better. That, um, that your individuality is not something that you begin from, it's something that you achieve by cultivating the quality of the relationships that locate you within the family, within the community, within the world. Mm -hmm. uh, let me divert uh, uh, from the topic a little bit. Uh, you know, you mentioned about individualism. Uh, I used to remember, I think, you know, uh, there were criticism of the Chinese culture. People would say, uh, you know, without this individualism, you tend to not that innovative in terms of developing, in terms of technology. I wonder what you make of that. Uh, I, I think there's a, an equivocation, a confusion that the idea of individualism within the Western tradition is grounded in the idea of an essential sameness, that each person has an immortal soul, that at the end of the day, we are essentially the same and only incidentally different. In a Confucian world, it's Butong. It's um, that, that each person has a certain set of relationships that makes that person unique. And so there's a kind of unique individuality in the Confucian tradition, as opposed to a discrete, independent, self-sufficient individuality within Western culture. Interesting description over there. Uh, you said at the Beijing International Book Fair in 2018 that it's time for Chinese philosophy, uh, quote, to step forward and for China to shoulder more responsibilities and become an international player. Uh, tell us more about that. Yeah, that, that um, the, as you, you describe the world as a world in crisis, and I, I think that that's a fair description, that, um, that we are facing a perfect storm uh, with, with the kinds of problems that human beings have to deal with. Um, China, uh, if we turn the clock back historically to the 18th century, there were two centers of culture in the world. One was Europe and one was China. In that time, uh, China was a leader in the world. And it's only been in the last century with Western imperialism and, and threats from outside that China has lost its, um, its, uh, its role in the world as a leading culture. Um, today, with the rise of China, um, with the economic and the political rise of China, uh, Chinese culture will follow behind and will, um, will challenge uh, liberal ways of thinking about the uh, human experience, the idea of autonomy and independence and, and freedom, a kind of, um, a kind of um, freedom that is defined in terms of no constraints. Um, so I think that Chinese values, the, the idea of xiao, uh, of family reverence, is really fundamental in the human experience that individualism has taken us away from family. What the whole world needs to do is to go back to family. Uh, that family is where we learn of our interdependence. Uh, a human infant cannot survive without the care of the parents and old people can't survive without the care of the young people. And so what we have to do is we have to get back to the family and understand that the family is the model for the world. In, in the Chinese tradition, 
you have this idea of jia guo tian xia uh, tonggo, the isomorphism between family, country, and world. And so we need to get back to family. Oh, need to get back to family. But, but then, uh, Professor, what can Chinese philosophy offer if we think about these crises right now we are facing? You know, we have this uh, uh, conflict in Ukraine, you have climate change, you have food crisis, energy shortage, uh, inflation repression, etc. Is there anything, you know, probably specific that Chinese philosophy can offer to help uh, alleviate the situation? Yeah, I, I think that the Chinese leadership has to begin in Asia. In, in, in the Analects of Confucius, there's a, 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 an expression, Xia uh, is, is um, Xia Xue or Shang Dao, uh, Xia Xue or Shang Da, that you have to begin where you are and move out uh, in order to, uh, to uh, influence the world. And so I think uh, China hosting this kind of a conference, the, the Bo Ao uh, 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 Asian uh, Forum, is re really a very important initiative that China Forum, needs. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's really, it needs to um, bring uh, the Asian cultures together that have not been so dramatically affected by liberal values. Liberalism is only 20% of the world's population. Most cultures are more like China than they are like Europe or America. And so I think that China having leadership within the Asian cultures, bringing people together around these values like family, like uh, relationships, like um, patience, like win-win, um, uh, 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 this kind of rhetoric, I think um, uh, is, 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 is the way that China needs to move forward in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, I wonder, you know, how did you become a fan of Chinese philosophy, uh, especially Confucianism? Uh, where did you start? Yeah, when I, when I was a young man, uh, 18 years old, uh, I had the opportunity to go to Hong Kong uh, as an exchange student. And Chinese culture is not in books. Chinese culture is not in institutions. Chinese culture is in people. And so that when I, when I arrived in Hong Kong and I made friends in Hong Kong, my, my classmates, I found that this, these are a very different kind of people that the values that they reflect in their relationships are very different from the values that we have in America. And so um, uh, now I'm an old man. And when I go back to Hong Kong, uh, I still have my Tong Hong, my Tong Shui, you know, my classmates who take me out in their fancy cars. They have lots of money. Hong Kong is all about gold. Uh, so in, in, in Hong Kong, they have lots of money and, and I'm a, a scholar. And so they take their old friend, the scholar, out uh, for, for nice meals in Hong Kong. Well, that's right. Uh, that's uh, the Chinese culture. I think uh, largely uh, probably Asian people uh, tend to do that uh, because we remember uh, the old time, the friendship we formed when we were young and uh, you know, even ch uh, from childhood. Uh, well, it's interesting, of course, the Chinese culture and the today's world. Uh, uh, still, I'm trying to figure out if there are any specific examples like uh, you can think of, like where you know the Chinese philosophy may offer a better solution to today's problem uh, than, say, any solution based on individualism or based on, say, Western values. Yeah, the 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 in, in, uh, a major value in the Chinese tradition is he er bu tong, he. And um, we translate he as harmony. But, but harmony doesn't do it. Like harmony is a kind of mathematical concept. It's ratio. It's the relationship among things, as opposed to oratio, which is um, the aesthetic. And so, so this, this concept of, of, of harmony in Chinese is really if we speak Chinese, it's it's yo hua gong shang ti xi. It's an optimizing symbiosis. It's the the attempt to get the most out of things. And so the reason that family is the governing metaphor 
in this Confucian tradition is because family is where you get the most out of people. If, if we're brothers, then I'll do anything I can to help you, you know? And so the culture promotes the idea of jia guo tian xia, you know, of, of this kind of isomorphism between family and the rest of the world. And so um, this is what China really has to offer is, is a model of a civilization that has persisted for more than 4,000 years with its key value being family. Now, as we said, the world, um, you know, we has, has been facing great challenges uh, over the past three years. You know, look at the COVID-19 and the Ukraine crisis. Uh, is the world increasingly divided philosophically or ideologically? And how do you look at these uh, you know, changes in the philosophical way, for example? Yeah, we're, we're, we're in a trans, transition period. Um, the, the human being has always faced uh, adversity. You know, a generation, my parents, there was the Second World War. They had adversity as well. But maybe these, uh, this adversity can bring us together. Maybe the fact that the human beings have to, um, to collaborate in order to address the kinds of problems we face today are going to bring us together. It's not like the, the, we don't have to persuade the world that they should believe in cooperation, that necessity is going to persuade people, that if we don't change our values, our practices, our intentions, we're not going to survive, that global warming is real and it's going to really damage the human environment to the point where we won't be able to bring it back. So my sense is that that the these Chinese values of cooperation, of interdependence, of um, shared uh, uh, harmony, that these will um, will prevail. Uh, that we we have no choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, where well, you mentioned that the Chinese uh, uh, culture, Chinese values, it reminds me of um, you know uh, Samuel Huntington's you know clash of civilizations uh, theory. Uh, I'm not sure whether you are a believer or not. Uh, so now you see like uh, international order, or at least some people are promoting uh, international order based on civilizations, you know, or based on their uh, the set of values they share uh, with a group of countries, or you know this. Is, Yes, it's a politics, geopolitics even, but it's somehow related to values, culture, uh, you know. Uh, so do you, do you see there's a somehow clash between different civilizations, different values? I think that values challenge each other. I, I knew Samuel Huntington, and um, Samuel Huntington was a political scientist who knew very little about culture. Um, that Huntington, uh, when he talks about cultures, when he talks about Confucianism and Islam and so on, he really doesn't understand what he was, what he was talking about. Um, that, that kind of, of, um, of uh, interpretation of the human experience is really um, pessimistic. The human being is really quite magnificent, you know, that, that we have the technologies, we have the science where if we wanted to, we could start tomorrow and we could eradicate global hunger in a very short period of time. That's where the human being is. Like we're not, we're not a bad thing, we're a good thing. We just have to learn how to use our intelligence in a way that, that promotes a global flourishing. We have to understand that America can't flourish unless China flourishes that these two things come together or they don't come at all. That the idea of contest is, uh, is, 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 is um, takes away the energy that we should be using to um, work together in order to so solve the problems. Exactly, when you talk about the you know, clash of civilization or competition, uh, usually people tend to see, you know, there's a winner, there's a loser. Uh, as you said, it's a zero sum. 
uh, instead right. of uh, you know working together, or growing together, or a win-win cooperation, right? Right, right, absolutely. Well, one of the fundamental values, like in in classical Greek philosophy, you have the idea of ontology. Ontology is the idea that there's something permanent and unchanging in the in the tradition, and it becomes the concept of God. In the Chinese tradition, you have a different way of thinking that comes out of the Book of Changes. It's this idea of sheng sheng lun, the idea of of planting the root and growing the tree. And may, maybe it's because China has been always an agrarian uh, culture that maybe the values of China really come out of the the history of uh, feeding the population by growing the crops and so on. I mean, the idea of the farmer uh, in, in China is a very, a very positive image. And so I think the, the, this idea of planting the root and growing um, is, is, is a beautiful way to think about the values of this Confucian tradition, that education is growth. In, in the Confucian tradition, morality is growth in relationships, is behaving to each other in a way that we deepen our relationship, that we grow our relationships. Um, religion in the Chinese tradition is going home at spring festival and eating the local food and, and, and spending a couple weeks with family and spending time with your classmates and your neighbors and, and renewing yourself in your relationships and then going back to the capital to do your job for another year. And so all of the values in the Chinese tradition really come out of this idea of growth, education, beauty is growth, uh, morality is growth. Well, you once said, you know, the time for superpower has passed. Do you still think so? Uh, you know, what do we see like uh, U.S. President Joe Biden uh, has been trying uh, to revive the U.S. Uh, leadership, if not uh, global leadership, is about leadership of the Western world. Yeah, I think, I think that Biden is trying to do a good job after a very bad president. I mean, uh, Trump was a, a monster. Uh, Trump had... Uh, no values other than money. And um, uh, his influence, not only on America, but on the world, was very toxic. I mean, he, um, this, is, this is a very bad person. And so Biden is trying to uh, help America get back on track. The real problem, though, with American politics is that American politics is not holistic. American politics thinks that the institutions the, the, the political institutions will guarantee um, the morality of the culture. At the end of the day, there's no alternative to moral leadership. That, that what we need from our political leaders, what we need from our social leaders, what we need from our educational leaders is virtuous leadership. The, we have to have people who have the right values that will lead the world in the, in the, in the right direction. And so Biden, Biden's a good man, um, and he's doing his best, but, but the reliance on the institutions really means that he can't make as great a difference as he can. A bad person like Trump can really make a, 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 a lot of difference, but a, but a good person, it's much harder to, to change the institutions. Uh, let's take a look at this um, uh, crisis related to the cultural thing, you know, as a result of the Ukraine crisis, the Western world, excuse me, has been canceling Russians, you know, Russian athletes are banned from international competition. Russian musicians in the U.S. and the EU are not allowed to perform in scheduled concerts. You know, the Cardiff uh, Philharmonic Orchestra even announced that it would not perform its scheduled or uh, Tchaikovsky concert, calling it inappropriate uh, to feature the 19th century Russian composer's work. Uh, what do you make of this kind of... Uh, you know, cultural decisions. Uh, is it a cancel culture, like a spreading from North America to other parts of the world? Uh, what will it do to the well-being of humankind, let's say? Uh, Ukraine is a sovereign country, and for Russia to invade it is, is as bad as America invading Iraq. Uh, America invading Iraq was a bad thing. 
uh, Putin invading um, uh, Ukraine is a bad thing. And so um, uh, Russia, you know, there, there are reasons. I understand that Russia has been pushed into a corner, that Russia feels as though it is, um, is being threatened uh, by the other uh, countries. But that doesn't give it the right to uh, strike out and, um, and destroy uh, uh, another country. Nobody has that kind of a, a right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, move on to the, uh, you know, North America, in particular the United States, you know, since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been cases, you know, increasing number of uh, hate crime cases against Asians in the U.S. How do you comment on that? Yeah, I, it's something that I'm very much worried about. My, my wife is uh, Japanese uh, descent. Um, my family are um, Asian as much as they are uh, Caucasian. Uh, America is in a, in a time of transition. Like a generation ago, uh, two, three generations ago, America was primarily European. And there are some Americans who believe that that's who Americans are. Americans are people who have come from Europe. And so this is where the racism comes from. Those people believe that America is theirs. What is happening is America is very quickly becoming a multi-ethnic uh, country. And so the people who are causing all of the trouble are the people who are, are going to be moving out of the way. That as America moves forward, hopefully um, the majority of Americans who are all of all different kinds of people will prevail. I, I come from Hawaii. In Hawaii, there is no majority uh, population that uh, we're all minorities in Hawaii. Every second marriage is a mixed marriage between uh, different ethnicities, between different races. And that's America's best hope is to look like Hawaii. Uh, back to the Chinese uh, philosophy, uh, your observation, to what extent do Chinese youngsters uh, embrace Chinese philosophy? Uh, what are the major challenges for them to promote Chinese culture and Chinese philosophy around the world? Yeah, I, I teach at Beida, you know, at Peking University, and my students are wonderful. The classroom is like a family. I'm shirfu teacher father or maybe sure gong teacher grandpa and my students are shui jie and shui di you know that um the classroom is very much a convivial uh cooperative uh, kind of an environment and i think you're right that that chinese young people have been very strongly influenced by liberal values but um but I, I, I think that the basic values of these young people are still strong, that they still are committed to uh, classmates. They are still committed to family. They are still committed to the traditional Confucian values. So I have great faith in, in the Chinese young people. Their, their own culture has been uh, challenged, but I think that that culture uh, will prevail in China. Thank you, Professor Ames. Uh, with that, we come to the end for today's discussion. Uh, thank you for watching. You can also find us on CGTN app on YouTube. I'm Xu Qingduo. Thank you for being with us. See you next time.